Ollie Taylor from Devon and Cornwall Police, a little bit off patch today, and I brought along with me colleagues from Devon and Somerset Fire and Rescue, Rob Carlson, and Becca Hewitt from the uh, South Devon and Dartmoor Community Safety Partnership based down in Teambridge. And we're here this afternoon to talk to you about the honest truth. Very quick straw poll. I know there are some honest truth driving instructors sat here today. Quick hands up for those who already signed up to us. Nice and high. Oh, more than I thought. Excellent. Okay. And hands up if you've heard of it. You haven't signed up, but you've heard of it through social media, the web. Oh, that's what I like to see. Right, you're all my friends now. You're all going on my Christmas card list. Excellent. Okay, so uh, I've been a police officer now for about 20 years, and I specialise in roads policing. And um, part of that role is a senior investigating officer for fatal and potential fatal road traffic collisions. And I have um, one of the grimmest tasks in the country is going out and investigating when it all goes horribly, horribly wrong on the roads. I get to meet the families and I always get asked the same two questions. What happened and why did it happen? And uh, I'm involved in this truth. I'm currently the chair of the partnership, a role that I, I'm very, very proud to be in. And I have two teenage sons who are coming up to driving in the next year or so. I don't worry about gang culture. I don't worry about knife crime. I don't worry about drug culture. My biggest fear for, for them both is getting out on the roads. So from a, on a professional level, I want to see less and less young people get written off on the roads, injured and killed. And on a personal level, I've got two sons that are going to be going out on the road in the next few years. I'd like to try and make it as safe as possible for them. This so afternoon, what we'd like to do is take you through the honest truth, where the honest truth came from, what the honest truth is, why you've got these slightly quirky looking images looking at you, how you can get involved, and what we ask you, what we're asking you to do as ADIs. Let me take you back to 2009. 2009, there was a single vehicle road traffic collision down in South Devon, a little, t a little tiny little village called Averton Gifford, which is down near a town called Kingsbridge. Kingsbridge and Solcombe. Any of you heard of Kingsbridge and Solcombe? Yeah. yeah. Fairly well known down on the uh, South Ham's coast. And it was following a beer festival at this little village and a single vehicle road traffic collision which claimed three lives in one vehicle. Nine-year-old lad, 17-year-old lad, and a 19-year-old lad. During the course of the inquiry, it was established that the uh, collision was entirely preventable. And it turned out the driver wasn't aware of the risks involved in being a young driver. So the local partnership, was, uh, a partnership meeting was convened and the partnership sat down to look at ways in which this could possibly be try and minimise the chance of something like this happening again. And trying to look at ways in which that could be achieved. And somebody at the meeting said, um, why don't we work with driving instructors? Or somebody else went, why would we want to work with driving instructors? So the idea was born. And the idea was the honest truth. With telling young drivers the honest truth about safer driving. About the risks involved in being a young driver. Nothing more complicated than that. So I'm speaking to a load of um, driving instructors. And we had a really grand ambition. We were going to work with 25 driving instructors in South Devon. So we set up a meeting. And the first meeting, 25 driving instructors turned up in Newton Abbott where uh, myself and Becca work. And we'd put together a little information pack for them. I'm speaking to driving instructors that uh, we're very aware that driving instructors as a, as a whole do deliver safety messages during courses, courses of lessons, and I'm sure virtually or everybody in this room does to some extent or other. But what we learned very quickly was that ADRs weren't, they weren't quite sure what to deliver and how much depth to go into and what subjects to cover. So we said, that's easy, we'll put together a little pack for you. So we cobbled together a little Heath Robinson resource pack and delivered the seminar to 25 driving instructors. They all took a resource pack away, and we went back to the office and thought, brilliant, job done, put our feet up, go home, <coughs> tea and medals, we've, we've achieved our objective. Then the phone started to ring, and ring, and ring, and ring. And we were getting phone calls from driving instructors right across Devon, from Plymouth, from Exeter, from North Devon, saying, I've been talking to my mate, a driving instructor down in South Devon, says about this Honest Truth project you're doing. How, how can we get involved? So we said, well, OK, well, yes, you can, we'll, we'll get involved, no problem at all. And over the next 12 months, we actually delivered to just over 300 ADIs right across Devon and Cornwall, still with the same um, Heath Robinson resource pack that we kind of cobbled together from other bits and pieces of projects that we were doing. We got to the 12 months and we thought, actually, we've, um, we've stumbled on something quite big here that, that driving instructors really, really want to work with us. And we couldn't understand why it hadn't been done before. So talking to the ADIs, they said, well, nobody's ever wanted to work with us before. So we said, why on earth not? Why don't we want to work with driving instructors? You are all road safety professionals. Becca's a road safety professional. I'm a road safety professional. Rob's a road safety professional. Rob and I 
work at one end of the scale. We work at a very, very messy end of the scale. Often as not, sifting through what's left of cars and lives when it's all gone horribly wrong. You are all at completely the other end of the scale, as important as the jobs, jobs that Rob and I and our colleagues do, but you are sat there right at the front end of young people learning to drive. You are in that position that nobody else could dream of being. I certainly couldn't, Rob couldn't, Becca couldn't, our colleagues couldn't. And you have this person wanting to soak up information. So why not give you the resources you need to be able to do that? So that is basically where we came from. So like I said, we had our 300 driving instructors. We then decided we could do an awful lot better. I'm going to let Rob explain in a minute exactly how that went about. I could stand up here all afternoon and tell you why I'm doing this, why we should be doing this. I don't want to. I want to introduce you to a young lady called Eve. Eve can't be here today. However, I'd like Eve, it's about four minutes, to tell you her story. If there's any other reason, that, uh, if you need another reason as to why we should be getting involved in this, come and see me afterwards. This is Eve. Um, well, I uh, was 16 when my brother died in a car accident. Um, he was 19 and he'd been out with all his friends, um, drinking and having fun. Um, he was out with his best friend and at the end of the night after several shots and several pints, um, they waited for a taxi, but because it was a Wednesday night, no taxis came, so uh, they decided that my brother would be fine to drive, that he wasn't too drunk. And um, he drove home. Um, he was driving at 80 miles per hour, and he was twice over the limit. Um, and he was supposed to turn a corner, and he uh, just drove straight into a tree. Um, and basically, uh, I mean, his friend was really lucky. He didn't, um, didn't come out with any severe injuries. Um, but uh, my brother was in the car, um, and the car sat on fire. So we, um, we couldn't see his body. Uh, we, we couldn't get to say goodbye to him properly. Um, I found out four days before my first GCSE exam uh, and it was um, the <laughs> worst thing um, to ever happen to me um, just because nothing stays the same after something like that and <laughs> one decision made by someone else has had so much effect on so many other people's lives. Um, And he was there on the Sunday and gone by the Thursday. And he was 19. He, had, he made such a stupid decision, such a bad mistake. And it, you know, nothing, nothing will change it now. Um, he was never a particularly good decision maker, but he was so full of life and he has so much potential. And so, being 20 now, I'm older than he ever was and he'll ever be. Um, and knowing, knowing what I have now, and knowing that he, um, We'll, we'll never have that because I just I just think that people make such abrupt decisions because they think it would never happen to them it could never happen to them but we all thought that all, all of my family all of Tom's friends you, you never think it's going to happen to you um but it did, and we have to live with that. So, um, I just think that for the sake of people's families, for the sake of everyone they care about, well, a moment of madness 
really does lead to what we all suffer, which is definitely a lifetime full of sadness for the loss of my brother. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> People have asked us if Eve is an actress, and no, Eve is Eve, and um, like I say, I've met Eve several times, um, charming, absolutely delightful young lady, but I think she explains better than, certainly better than I could, um, there are Eves all over the country, and if together we can do something to try and <coughs> reduce the number of Eves around the country, that's got to be the right thing to do, it's got to be a good thing to do. Okay, so, where do we go after the, uh, after the first 12 months? What we did was we sat down and we thought actually we could do an awful lot better than we'd done before. So we sat down in a darkened room for a very long time with some very, 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 very strange people, which Rob will tell you about in a minute, and came up with what you see in front of you today. Today is actually quite a special day, and it's a day we've chosen specifically because we're here with 200 ADIs. We have two new messages. Any of you, any of you who do follow us on Twitter will know that we've been waiting for this afternoon to unveil our two new messages, which we will do in the next 10 or 15 minutes. So you will be the very, very first ADIs in the country to see the Honest Truth's brand new messages. Hope you like them as much as we do, but we'll find out shortly. Anyway, an ideal time to bring Rob in. Rob. Thanks, Holly. <laughs> Afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name's Rob Carlson. I'm a station manager down in Devon and Somerset Fire and Rescue. So like Holly, uh, we're a little bit off patch. I live in Plymouth. Um, which was still dark when I got up at Havas Street this morning to travel up to see you. Me, 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 me. Me, me, me. Ollie is just a sprog, he's only been in 20 years. I've just almost completed my 31st year in the fire service. For all but about 18 months when I was in training, I've been operational, I'm still an operational officer now. In fact, I'm on duty tonight, so I'll be sat at home with a blue light on my car. And for 30 years, like Ollie, I've been pitching up alongside the carnage that we, we see on our roads and having to deal with the bits and the wrecked cars and the girls and guys that ride the red trucks, I'm going to look after them as well. So anything I can do to reduce, like Ollie said, Eve's story, so much the better. I've also got two lads. One's 19, one's coming up 17. 19 year old is already starting to drive. 17 year old uh, in the summer, guess what he wants for his birthday? He wants a set of lessons, wants to be sat next to one of you fine people. Take you back, Ollie said, we started off and we produced this Heath Robinson type information pack pulled from various bits of information. Now working with our ADIs, we said, well, what do you actually need? What do you want? The messages we got back from them were, well, we deliver safety messages. We try and make our young people safer before we let them out on the roads after they pass their test. But we're not quite sure of some of the facts and figures and we're not perhaps sure of some of the fines and some of the penalties that Ollie and his nasty bunch of chums dish out when they stop them on the side of the road. And we said, well, how can we make this better? What can we come up with? Now, as Ollie said, we were locked away in a dark room. It's a very strange meeting.